All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to St. Louis Hustle Podcast, our debut episode where we're going to be talking about sharing and teaching kids about entrepreneurship and financial literacy at a young age. So without further ado, man, let's roll this intro. Growing up in St. Louis has never been easy, and most say, if you want to succeed here, that you must leave and put down roots somewhere else because of the strong crabs in a barrel mentality here. I don't know if I'm just an optimistic person, but to see people like Chuck Berry and Nelly make it in the music industry, or the Roberts Brothers and Dave Stewart in business, or William Lacey Clay Jr. in politics, can we blame the city, or is it that people just aren't hungry enough? We're talking to all of the movers and shakers in this town, from entertainers to politicians, social activists and organizers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Is there a curse on this city that holds people back? Is there an unseen hand that decides who makes it and who doesn't? You're about to find out. Welcome, Welcome to St. Louis Hustle. Hustle. is underway uh i don't know if you guys know this lovely young lady right here to my right or is that my left i don't know i'm all turned around on camera but this is michelle hey i'm cortez hustle and welcome to st louis hustle we here, y'all we here look that's what happened when you go live that's right this is live y'all <laughs> anything can happen when you go live if you didn't ever done it live this is the risk that you take <laughs> Pull the core when you pop, pop the bottle. Things happen. You know what I'm saying? There this is it. I'm good, but we here. We, we are here. Awesome. There. How was your weekend, Shell? Man, my weekend was cool. My weekend was real cool. You know. Uh, so my my thing is, I'm trying to get out and do more uh, in, in our wonderful city. I'm trying to get out and see people. Uh -huh. I wanted to experience goat yoga. Okay, and so I saw on the news, and I was like, "Go yoga, hmm? What is this about? You know, yoga is supposed to be relaxing." <laughs> and, well, goats or goats? I mean, I ain't really into animals, but I was like, you know, right. people. So what about it? So I was gonna go down there to Union, Missouri, and I was gonna participate with goat yoga. Okay, <laughs> That's what I had in mind, and so. I went down there and um, I'm I'm scared of I'm scared of goats. I, I figured it out. I got down there and um, I chickened out of the goat yoga. What? <laughs> I chickened out of the goat yoga. Did that? Does it go together? Um, yeah, I, I didn't do it. They let the goats get on your back. Really? I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't I ain't know how I felt about that. I don't know what it's like to have a monkey on your back. But I figured a goat would be like 10 times worse. So, um, I, I, yeah, I ain't, I ain't go through with it because I'm like, they let the goats walk on me and the goats was like on your back and, and the people thought it was therapeutic. Really? <laughs> so goats walk on your back and they call that yoga? Yeah, and they was like, mm. and I, I just, they was one with the goat, but be one with the goat. I was like, <laughs> no, I don't see oneness right there. I don't. I wasn't feeling a oneness with the goat because goats is they the whole they you ever yes. get right by a goat goats is mean when they don't really like you and I don't know if it's been yeah. I chickened out of goat yoga I ain't gonna make that happen you know what I'm saying so I left goat yoga and um, I went on down I went and found brunch and mimosas at my favorite place um, <laughs> that was much more enjoyable so um, mimosas like me so yeah I that's what I did this weekend. Well, outside of our radio interview, I, um, you know, did a little hanging out and, and really it was me all preparing for this show is what I got caught up in all weekend long. Um, uh, but we did go and check out a movie. My wife and I went to see The Invisible Man. I don't know if y'all know anything about that, but... Uh, was it good? I was thoroughly excited and... My wife, not so much. <laughs> I mean, was it a good movie though? It, it was, looked like it was gonna be like a fire movie because it, it looked was like good to me. Uh, to her, I don't know uh, if she actually liked the movie. Uh, she was like, she came out of the theater like it was 
shoot her. I ain't. I'm like, all right, that was dope as heck. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know uh, what we were supposed to do with that, uh, that response that I got from her, but I was a little disappointed with her response. <laughs> See, I, it was, I, know, it was you, I don't know for the females, though, the previews. Kind of make it look, you know, we're being chased by somebody invisible. Nobody really believe us. I don't know. And she might have been walked out like, y'all throw punches. Like, you know, I don't, I gotta get to you and find out the true story behind. I got, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna holler at Lee. I'm gonna get with your girl, find out what really. Right, right. Well, but it, it really, it really was suspensable. It had some, some real good stuff. Um, that I thought uh, it had a nice twist to it uh, towards the end. Um, so yeah, man, I thought it was a, a real good, good um, <laughs> a movie. Uh, but maybe, um, maybe it wasn't. Uh, I, I was cool with it. She wanted to go see the movie about the dog and the adventure, and um, with I can't even remember the actor's name, but. Uh, nevertheless, that what we landed on, and um, it was it was like I said, it was, it was good. To, 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 <laughs> right. to the girl, it was, it was it was super cool to, to me though, and I was and it was anticipated. I was hyped going in, and then afterwards, I was hyped, and I was like, "Hey, what do you think?" And she was like, "Huh." I was like, huh. No, that was, that was a good, good, good movie. You were there by yourself. And then, look, I'm going to let you have that word. I'm not even going to get you about that word you just used. Mm -hmm. yeah. First day. Okay. You, oh, <laughs> that word is suspensable. I don't know. We might have to go to the official judges to find out if suspensable is a word. Yes. All right. All right. I, I think suspensable is now a word. Uh, we're going to put that in the St. Louis Hustle Podcast Dictionary. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going down. <laughs> we go, we go make it a word. When you a hustler, you can just make up your own vocabulary. That was you tell me. Yeah, that's that's how it goes down. That's how it goes down. That's the St. Louis Wikipedia <laughs> of words. You just go, bah, there it is. It's, yeah, we uh, know that there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the STL uh, in terms of making up. Uh, vernacular, so uh, that's just how we're gonna get down. You show so right, <laughs> get forth the word show S H O L L. You that's show right. that's right, you okay. know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So don't hate on us. Um, but really quickly, uh, I know that we have a question of the day coming up for the people. Uh, and uh, before we ask the question, tell us a little bit about what happened that made you start thinking about this question. Okay, so <laughs> when I was out and about perusing this weekend, was hanging out with a buddy of mine. And so um, a buddy of mine, um, he owns two establishments. He owns a food establishment and he owns a, um, a cocktail lounge. And so um, my buddy in his former life, Used to be a um, a mm, how do I put it? He used to be a street pharmacist. He used to be a um, man. He used to be a street hustler. Let's okay. put it like that. Okay. He used to be in the street. And so um, as we were, you know, hanging out at his um, his lounge, we were um, uh, me and a girlfriend of mine were just you know watching the business, and he was having a great night, and business was you know flourishing, and we were just watching business happened and you know uh, my my uh, girlfriend used the term uh my friend I hate to use the term girlfriend she's my friend she said a little mean okay so my okay. friend used the term um she was watching the way business was being conducted and she said it don't look like he really converted his hustle because he was <laughs> just the same way he ran his street business gotcha. it was legitimate gotcha. but she noticed certain nuances in the way that he ran this legitimate business. There were certain street nuances mm -hmm. that were mm -hmm. existing. And so it just, it made me really think about the phrase converting the hustle. Gotcha. gotcha. So that's what kind of led me to bring up, you know, the, the question of the day, which is. Question of the day. Can yeah. a street hustler, a D-boy, uh, convert 
that hustle or legitimize that hustle and 100 percent and do nothing but that and not have his hands in anything else because i i think about some of these guys who were supposedly big time like the uh jay-z's of the world the rick rosses and i'm like okay that music money is good but are they in some way shape or form still connected to the streets and doing some some stuff that they ain't got no business doing um so i don't know so uh we're gonna dive back into your answers on that so let us know in the comments if yeah you believe that a street hustler can convert the hustle 100 percent and walk away from the street real real quick uh, real real quick cortez also with that can you when you convert the hustle is it when you convert can you run your business the same way you ran your dope game business Ooh. you know what i'm saying do you run your business with the same strategy that you ran your dope game <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So you could be legitimate, but if you still use the same street rules and legitimate business, how, you know what I'm saying? How does that work out and for how does that work? you? You know what I'm saying? Does that work and is it possible? Let's let's leave that right there. Let, but we want your comments. Let's 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 talk about it. Is it possible? Because I don't know how well that transcended. I really believe that my friend that has these two businesses I believe he's legitimate, but I believe he's using the same strategy. He's using a dope mm -hmm. strategy to run a legitimate business. And I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> how, like how, how would that play out like long term? Uh, so leave us your comments on this one, man. I'm, I'm interested to know uh, your comments. You can tweet at the show at STL underscore hustle. Uh, I'm going to pull up the St. Louis Credit Repair Institute Twitter feed here in a second so that I can see your actual comments and your tweets. Uh, but yeah, make sure you let us know your thoughts on that one right there. Uh, so what do we have next in store? is what's cracking in the loop, Shell? Man, um, so many things going on. I, this is what I want to know, right? So as I get out, so this is part of what I want my, um, I'm about to use a big word, and I really hope it fits right here, because if it doesn't, y'all, <laughs> I'm going to take a swing at it. This is what I think I want my trajectory to be. Okay. Okay, I, I think that works. Especially with this show to be. It sounded nice. <laughs> um, is I want my part of this show to be, I want to get out. Anybody that knows me, you know that mm, I'll be with the this, right? So mm -hmm. I want to get out and I want to talk to St. Louis, right? So mm -hmm. I want to know what's going on in St. Louis. So I want to go to the hot spots. I want to go, and you know, we were talking about the goat yoga earlier, but mm -hmm. I want to go to everything from okay goat yoga too but i want to go to different church check-ins because you know y'all be not be rocking my whatever my jesus were uh but i want to go from different church check-ins to different concerts to different culture events uh i want to check out the different finance events um but i want to go everywhere the people are you know and so i want to know what's going on in st louis and i want to be there you know i want to be there to represent STL hustle. Um, I want to be where you guys are. So I'm gonna need that feedback, you know. Um, last night I checked out um a place in North County that gets a lot of they get a lot of buzz. Um it's a, it's a place that um I frequent. Al's Lounge. Um they, they do a lot of business and Al's a he's a good guy. Um Is went to Al? North A L S. Yeah, A L S. He's a Normandy um and um he uh, does a lot of business in North County. He does a lot of good things in the community. Um, but he, he features a live band on, um, on Monday nights, actually several nights a week. But um, he makes sure that he keeps things going um, in his establishment. And that's one of the things that I really admire about his um, about his his uh, his lounge is that he has something going every night of the week. Um, and that's one of the reasons that attract me there. Um, and so that's one of the, you know, I, I stopped through. You know, and so I want to go to different places, you know, everywhere from St. Charles, you know, I'll travel to Union, I'll go to Pacific, I'll, I'll go from the city to the county, um, you know, 
just to see what's going on in St. Louis. But I need some of that feedback, you know. So I want you guys to submit. Let me know where you want me to come, you know. Um, come hang out with you, you know. Um, cool, so we can make cool. So let oh, y'all know where she needs to be going to check out this week, man, and we're going to make it happen. I'm going to attempt another live stream uh, uh, dealio here. I'm going to see if I can get into uh, our sponsor ad for today. So let me see if this is going to work. Uh, don't kill me if it does. Have you ever wanted to be on TV? If the answer is yes, we have great news. Social media is the new TV and you are the star. And you don't need a crazy budget of millions of dollars. At Focus Network Media, we teach business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers, and artists how to use video to build their own network on social media. You have the power of TV in the palm of your hand. Go, Go where, where the, the people, people are, are, and the people are on social media. That was my good friend, uh, Stephen Russell, and his lovely wife, Teresa, at Focus uh, Network Media, uh, where they say social media is the new TV, and you are the star. Um, yep. Look at that live commercial live spots. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to get those technical issues done. Uh, but I've got a couple places that you might want to hit, uh, Shelle, as we are talking about um, what's cracking in the loo. So let's see here. Uh, there's the Orchid Show going on at the Missouri Bat Botanical Garden. Whoa. That is Bucket. going on uh, all season. Three curry Flower, ain't it? That's a flower, ain't it? It is a flower. Uh, <laughs> if you ask me to describe what it looks like, I couldn't. Uh, <laughs> okay. But we know what's in the flower family. You yes. know, that's, yes. right. that's a good point. Yes. That's a good story. It, it, it blooms. Um, okay. All right. At okay. the uh, Science Center, they've got the Da Vinci uh, exhibition. Uh, okay. Yeah. That might be something. After watching the Da Vinci Code and um, Angels and Demons, I might want to go see something like that. I might have to send you on. I might have to send you as a surrogate. I'm not going to go play. <laughs> yeah, I don't play with the guy going there with my holy oil. Be like, when I come to fight the devil, I come to fight the devil. Now, I might get put out. I might. Yes, if you go in sprinkling oil all over the place, you are going to get put out without a shower. <laughs> You know what? Here's the thing. I'll go, but I'll be like, can I get you on standby? Because I'll be, uh, you might get to talk. You have a collect call from St. Louis County Jail. And there's a, hey, put hands. They got me, dog. They got me. They put their hands on me, dog. They put their, them laws got me. They put their hands on you. I'm just saying, I, I, I just. And then there to fight the devil because you you sent me to where I was the demons and the and the, the I had to go with the angels and the demons. And you did that to me and me to the Da Vinci cut. I go, but I'm gonna take my my Earl. Yeah, my you, Earl. you might need to take your Earl with you. Uh, also for the kiddos, man, for the babies, there what? is uh, Curious George going down at the Magic House. Oh, I know about Curious George, man. You know, see, I used to take my kids. Now, my children is a little older now, but I used to take my kids to the Magic House when they were of age. And you know what? Good times at the Magic House. Um, <laughs> I need to borrow some kids. I can roll to that, but I'm going to need to borrow some kids because I think it'd be a little yes. weird showed up now. Um, but I'm going to need to borrow some kids, but I'll roll to that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's going to be cool, man. The Magic House, for those of you who don't know, uh, if you haven't been to the Magic House, they do some phenomenal stuff, man. And it's free. That's what I love about it, man. We got a lot of free attractions here in St. Louis that uh, a lot of people don't know about, man. So uh, definitely uh, check that out. And yep, I'll it's for the afternoon. I'm going to bring them back. But I'll take them for the afternoon. <laughs> yes, start that's, with that's it. My wife yep. and I are a few months away from empty nesting it. Uh, youngest baby boy, 18 senior in high school um he got to get it together struggling in math a little bit so i'm like uh, son uh, <laughs> we got to come on out of here man uh don't go messing up my record i am um 
I will be, when he comes out, I'll be seven for seven, right? Seven young men, five of my own sons, a nephew and a cousin, uh, came through this household and got in and out of high school. Wow. Um, Wow. Six of the, five of the six so far did at least attend college. Uh, wow. You know, they all didn't finish, but I provided a way. My wife and I made a way for them to at least go. Uh, it was up to wow. them to stay. Um, wow. And that, yes. that worked. So now wow. out of those seven guys, uh -huh. none of them have ever been suspended uh, wow. except baby boy. And not only did he get suspended at the first of all of them, he got suspended twice. Uh, so he's so all for it. So it's like, dude, not only do you get suspended, you get suspended twice in the same year. Uh, he making the full off time. The other ones could get it right He's like, hey, they ain't doing it. Let me do it too fast. You know, so imagine us showing up at the school and they're like, um, yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> right. They're like, oh, what's going on in the home? <laughs> Y'all doing? I mean, let's be honest, man. We out of gas. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. It, it happens. Uh, I've witnessed this happen with my mom. You know, I'm fourth born of six. So when she got oh. down to those younger two, uh, you know, it was kind of, you know, do your thing and just, just stay out of trouble and don't get, don't, don't go to jail, don't hurt nobody, don't hurt yourself. And I kind of, I feel on that. <laughs> <laughs> there, there it is. There it is. And it, it happens with the youngest one. My youngest one did everything that she was big enough and bad enough to do. But I, only, I mean, I only had two. So the first one, I was like, boom, no issue with the youngest one. She was like, oh, that's what we're doing. She just went through. She ain't did nothing. Okay. Every year I was at the school. Every year, <laughs> kindergarten through twelfth grade, I was talking to every teacher for every reason. Every single year at every school, wow. that's it. <laughs> it just, that was just the way it was. And when we got to college, I was like, yeah, you know, I just yeah, beach kids people. That's all I gotta say, beach kids. I just, <laughs> yes. I, I just quit whooping her. I just learned how to throw shit. I was just like, you know what? Get them up through here. They don't need no more. Just up through that. Not the rotted. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Throw away your belt. I'm not an advocate for a Buddha belt no more. You get them up through here, don't need no marks. I'm sorry. Who said that? I, mm, no. That's not what I said. Excuse me. Sorry, Lord. That ain't what I said. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's that's what it is, though. That's that's what it is. Um, and and we, we ain't um, necessarily proud of it. Oh. We is definitely oh. trying to make sure that these uh, jokers are going to be all right. Exactly. That's and you want the baby out of the house and I'm sure y'all ready to start y'all if you let it, uh, what, emptiness life. Y'all like. <laughs> yes, we absolutely are without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow like of a doubt. <laughs> like, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk around in my drawers. Get out of the house. Yeah, go on. Get on away from around here. I, I, I keep trying to do that. My wife's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, this is how you get them to leave. Right. Because <laughs> nobody wants to see that. This is how you get them to leave. <laughs> oh my God, Pops, what's he tripping up of? You don't get gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't forget to answer in the comments or tweet at us at STL underscore hustle your answer to the question of the day. Can a D-boy go fully legit and not have his hands in anything illegal and is it a good idea for him to run his legit enterprise the same way he ran his street enterprise now let's be clear we know that uh you know when it comes to hustling the streets that is an entrepreneurial endeavor it's just been perverted a little bit um, right. so they gotta know distribution they gotta know territory they gotta know sales they gotta know marketing they gotta know anything that every other traditional business has to uh, know and they got to execute on those things or else they're going to be out of business uh but 
out of business for them means something else than most people. <laughs> they can be dead right. or, or locked right. up, right? Right. Uh, and then I like the the memes that they put out. I don't know if um, Jay Z was the first to say this or whoever said it, but that the difference between a D boy and a hustler is a D boy can only sell drugs. A hustler can sell anything. So yeah. they should yeah. be able to legitimize that hustle. So what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to make a valid attempt to get our sound working for our interview with our very, very special guest, uh, Miss Ariel Bivens Big of Young Biz Kids. So we talked about teaching uh, children entrepreneurship, teaching them um, you know, how to uh, handle money, even how to handle stress. So let me just see here if we can make this thing work the way I intend for it to work. Otherwise, Shell is going to have to ad lib all three parts. She's going to have to ad lib what I said. She's going to have to ad lib what Ariel said. And she's going to have to ad lib what um, she said. <laughs> And she, she can do it, though. Let's, let's not get that part twisted. So let me hop over to uh, our interview with the lovely Miss Ariel Bivens Biggs and see if we can make it work. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to St. Louis Hustle, guys. This is our first ever episode of our podcast. Super excited. I'm Cortez Hustle. That is Michelle A. And we are chilling out with Ariel Bivens Biggs over here, founder and CEO of Young Biz Kids. She's teaching entrepreneurship and financial literacy to our babies. So let me have Ariel introduce herself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Ariel, and what made you start Young Biz Kids? Yes. So I am a mom. I'm a wife. I am um, just a community mom. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like everybody's mom. But uh, basically, I'm an author, an entrepreneur, and also a leader within the community. I'm a social entrepreneur. I like to build, make that impact to change others' lives. Um, what made me start Young Biz Kids that my, my son, which was seven at the time, uh, talked a lot about entrepreneurship and wanted to start his own business. And um, I started speaking to that child that was in me it through him. So when he started to tell me, after I told him no a couple times, but after he started to tell me more why he should have his own business, I started to support him in doing that support. He um, ran a lemonade stand with his best friend, and parents kept asking me how did I get him to understand how to run business, and I was telling them ways that I taught him. We started with six kids and quickly grew to 30 kids. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, go ahead, Michelle. Wow. So, so you, you mentioned that, you know, he, you know, he, he told you, mom, I want to start a business. You know, most kids just wake up and, and won't serve early in the morning on Saturday morning. They won't lay those for Christmas. Your kids wants to start a Fortune 500. You know, where did that seed come from? Like, what was it that he wanted that planted that seed for him wanting a, a, a business? Um, it was because uh, he wanted something out the vending machine, and he's always asking for something. And so I tell him, I, I'm, no, you always want something. Can I have, can I have? And I'm like, no. And I'm, that, that person, I said, you know, that money that you put into those machines goes to the owner. Somebody owns those machines. And then a little bit later, by the time we got in the car, he was like, well, I want to own vending machines. And I laughed, and I'm like, boy, you can't own vending machines, but... <laughs> He proved us wrong that he can own vending machines. So right now he's 12 years old, owns 12 vending machines. And if you Google the youngest vending machine owner in the United States. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yes. Wow, he's 12 in business. He's a business owner, diversifying his funds and everything. <laughs> Good. And so he's supposed to get a loan, I'm just saying. Awesome. <laughs> Hey, listen, I know you guys recently just kicked off your major uh, uh, launch for 2020. Uh, you guys are celebrating five years, right, this year? Yeah. So yeah. what do you have in store for the babies in 2020? 
So we have our big gala that's coming up at the end of the year. October is November's. Um, and it's going to bring awareness to youth entrepreneurship. St. Louis has a lot of young entrepreneurs, a lot of kids that's dabbling in entrepreneurship and starting and running businesses. So we uh, plan on doing a gala to bring that awareness. But then also we have our monthly classes where we um, are always looking for volunteers mm -hmm. and to help mentor these children and to help put them on the right path and be that person in their lives that we didn't have as far as entrepreneurship. So when we were growing up, we didn't have anybody that can tell us about entrepreneurship. But we have so many adult entrepreneurs in St. Louis that can pour into these babies. We just really, really are looking for a, a bridge that gap between the young entrepreneurs and the adult entrepreneurs. And awesome. then we have some pitch competitions that we're going to train them on. We're going to train them really well on media and how to handle media. And then we're going to train them on how to um, position themselves to have more than one stream of income off of the one thing that they do. And then the final thing that we're going to uh, do is mental health. We want to make sure that if we add that mental health component into entrepreneurship, because as entrepreneurs, we know that it's ups and downs and different things that happen. And we want to make sure that we're training them on how to deal with those things and how to uh, recognize certain stressors within their lives and have coping tools to deal with those things. Awesome, awesome. And as a serious uh, advocate of mental health, uh, I think that is very, very commendable uh, because if you think about it, you guys are not just helping the young entrepreneur, you're helping the entire child. They're learning yeah. money at a, long, a young age. They're learning business at a young age. Now you're telling me that because of what they're going to go through as young developing entrepreneurs, that's going to bring a certain amount of added stress. And you guys want to help them learn how to uh, adequately deal with that. I think that is amazing. Uh, go ahead and jump in, Michelle. I know you got some things you want to talk about. So, um, well, I have a question. My question, Cortez, Ariel. So what is your, what's your youngest biz kid age and what's your oldest right now? So and then Okay, so right now we do seven to high school 18 as a group. My youngest is actually five now because she's my daughter. She's not an official young biz kid, but she's a young biz kid because my, my daughter owns a, um, a gumball machine business. So the quarter candy machines, we wanted to give her vending machines also because she had the entrepreneur bug at three years old. So we gave her the, the candy vending machine so that she could have something of ownership of hers that belongs to her and that she could make her own money. So if you ask my, at the time, three-year-old, what are you doing with your money? She's like, well, after I make it, I'm taking it to the bank and I'm saving it for later so that I can buy something that I want. So she was understanding that concept at an early age. But it's the environment of our home also that that's the environment where we're an entrepreneurial home. That's that's awesome. It's it's so great to to start them there. You know, the Bible say train them a child in the way they should go. When they get older, they yeah. shall not depart from that thing. That's a whole nother Um, I wanted to talk. I wanted you to talk a little bit. You know that you know that was gonna creep on out. They say what's in you gonna come out, and then we just wait for that to just pop out. Um. <laughs> I wanted you to uh, maybe talk a little bit about some of the strategies that you use when dealing with some of the younger children. How do you keep the the attention of some of your younger children? Now, Shelly loves kids, but you know, children is sometimes the high energy. How do you keep the um, the attention of some of the younger kids? What are some of the strategies that you use in um, teaching um, uh, the entrepreneurship, you know, that the curriculum for them? Yeah, so making sure that the um, teacher or the facilitator is high energy that has that um, really understands how to work with children. And then the other thing is the kid has to want it too because we try to make the environment as fun as possible for them, but we also know that it's a seriousness to what we're doing. We try not to make it classroom style and yeah. get them free and yell and things like that, but we also want them to know that it's not this is not, I'm going to say child's play, like what you're embarking on is something serious that can set you up for your future if you follow these strategic steps. 
Awesome, so, uh, awesome. Hold on, hold that thought, Michelle, because we got to go pay some bills. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to let Michelle keep going with that line of questioning because she's become Miss Michelle, Attorney Michelle, interrogation uh, going on here. So uh, give us a second, guys. We'll be right back with more St. Louis Hustle podcast. And Ariel is going to tell us more about how she's working with not only with the kids, but she did a special project with the parents, too. So we'll get into that when we come back. I have done two prior Longevity Better Health Now challenges. I decided this time around I needed an extra push. A good thing to remember is 32 pounds is the weight of my three and a half year old son, and I am not carrying around a, a three and a half year old, basically. I'm a mother of four. I just want to want to see how healthy I can get so that I can be around for a while. It's pretty amazing whenever you're excited to get on the scales every morning and see what the numbers are instead of dreading it. When I went to convention last year, the day of the 5K, when this lady, Merle, came across the finish line, it, she was visually impaired, she was blind. From this day forth, I said, I'm, I'm changing my lifestyle, and I'm just gonna be a whole new me. I was out of control. I really let myself go. And I thought, okay, who loses 12 pounds in a week? I'm like, this is such a joke. But it happened, and it happened again, and again, and again. Anybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Leading up to today has been a whirlwind, but I feel amazing. Everybody makes you feel really awesome when you come here too, so it just kind of like heightens your excitement about everything. I feel so much better if I could help just one person be able to do that for their life, then it'd be worth it all. I feel amazing. I can't believe how far I've came from last year to this year. I have kept my weight off within two to five pounds, which is a complete miracle. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our first ever episode of St. Louis Hustle Podcast. I'm Cortez Hustle. She's Michelle A. And she is Ariel Bivens Big. We're talking teaching entrepreneurship and money to kids. So go ahead, uh, Michelle. I know you wanted to ask uh, Ariel something before we jump off the break. We, I, I'm so sorry, I just got so into it. I'm just going to go out, you know, my kids long, so I'm going to go out here and find me some kids and we're going to make some money. Um, but so I wanted to, when we left off, I think my last question, follow-up question was, um, all that you were saying about, you know, getting the kids and making sure, you know, that they understand some of those fundamentals even when they're young. I guess the other side of that is making sure that it, that the kid, um, that the kid has that natural um, that the, the natural entrepreneurial, the nuance is there and that is in the kid and it's not the parent that's dragging them there saying, oh, my kid has it and they really don't. I'm sure that that may be sometimes my good itself as well. <laughs> yeah, it does. But before I answer that, I want to go back to when you were talking about training up a child. When um, I three years old, my son, Mikey, when he was three years old, he told me train up a child. He, well, he oh. said Proverbs 22 and 6, and he was saying, he rest on me, and I was like, what is Proverbs 22 and 6? So I grabbed the Bible, I opened it, and I said, train up a child, and he looked up at me, and he said, in a way I should go, and when I get older, I won't depart, and then he went back to playing with his wrestling men. So I was like, hmm, that stuck with me, so when I was telling him no about entrepreneurship, it hit and rang a bell with me that when we train up a child, it's not only in just a certain thing or in the word of God, it's in natural life. So if he's showing yeah. this in entrepreneurship, I need to train him up in entrepreneurship so that he can be everything that God purposed him to be. That's it. That is so it. You know what, too, and I'm going to say this, and you know what? Here's how it just comes together. I put this shirt on. A friend of mine made this shirt, but I'm going to just say this about your baby. His faith secured the bag at yeah. young age. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Absolutely. Just right off, and, and I ain't look at the. Then there's somebody else looking at them. Okay, I'm there. Yeah, I'm okay, I'm but I'm gonna go back to your other question. But I'm gonna go back to your other question. You know, it sometimes it can seem like dragging a kid to be an entrepreneur. That's yes. why I, I distinguish the difference between a business owner and an entrepreneur. 
I yeah. believe that our all kids are entrepreneurial, which that just means that they're natural born problem solvers. So if you put something in front of them, you will help them to process through on how to get to the, the desired end result. So when you do that, you're showing them how to communicate in life, how to get through certain situations in life and how to cope with certain things in life by just being a simple problem solver. So I believe even if you are dragging your kids to the class, not necessarily starting a business, but getting those skills that you learn from that. Because I'll be honest, every Saturday morning, kids don't want to get up and go to a class, you know. But the skill sets that they can learn by going through that class and some things they never would have been introduced to if they wouldn't be at that class, it's worth dragging your kids there. Now, to put them full-blown in business, I don't think parents can do that. To start an LLC for the kids, do it before uh -huh. the kids are ready, because kids change their mind, and they might like basketball today, and now they like football, now they want to dance, yeah. now, they want to yeah. now they want to go ride a bicycle upside down under the water, you know, so they just have all of these amazing, crazy ideas that pop in their head, and I believe entrepreneurship gives you that platform to let them experiment and go through the process, do you really like this, because ultimately the process is, do a business plan. Do your market research. Now come yeah. back to me and tell me how this is going to make you money or how this is going to impact the community. Those steps would allow you to see if this kid really wants to do that thing because they'll put in the work. And if they're not putting in the work, that lets you as a parent know that, you know what, they really are not into this like I thought. Yeah, well, that's amazing. And it's good. You know, be in tune with your child. Uh, but also give them a chance. Don't don't let them say, I don't feel like going today, and that's the end of entrepreneurship for the rest of their life. Because yeah. they're going to yeah. always not feel like doing something. So, yeah, sometimes they need that added push. Uh, tell me, Ariel, what are some of the things that maybe some of the parents are getting out of Young Biz Kids that not even you expected to, to happen with the parents? Because I know you can't raise a young entrepreneur. You can't help them in their business without learning a thing or two yourself as a parent. Yeah. 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 So the parents are being inspired to start businesses and start uh, inspired to get their credit scores up over 700, inspired to buy new homes, buy new cars, and looking at interest rates. Like they're having conversations that they normally wouldn't have had. So that was a big thing that I didn't expect. And then on the flip side, well, not even on the flip side, but on like digging more deep into it. Um, as moms, you know, you, uh, you kind of lose yourself. You're doing everything for your kids. I didn't realize that so many moms felt the way that I felt far as I'm giving everything that I got to my kids. And what do I want my legacy to be that she gave so much to her kids? But what did she do for herself? So a group of the moms got together. And we wrote a book together called Hashtag Mom Boss. And we all talk about how we raise our entrepreneurial kids, but how we use entrepreneurship as a parenting tool to build a strong relationship and communicate mm -hmm. with our kids through the things that they uh, love to do. So yeah. we were able to become number one best-selling authors in several categories. We were able to uh, hit hot new release. And we were all able to make additional income off of uh, writing this book. So it, it was just an amazing thing to see them transform in, from just being moms to actually become entrepreneurs with right alongside their kid. And my belief is you can't tell a kid what to do if they don't see you doing it. You know, so when they see you do it, it just encourages them more. And then you have, you're able to understand and relate to those kids more. Because honestly, Mikey was out there selling books and he was, he was really doing a good job on selling books. But I didn't realize how tiring it was to sell books, sign books, take mm -hmm. a picture with a person, and keep the same facial expression for three right. or four hours. I didn't realize that that was so, it's a whole job. When you're done, you're sweating, you're tired, you're exhausted. So it helped yeah. me to understand what it felt like for him to yeah. really sell books and be an author. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Well, when we come back, Ariel is going to tell us how you can get that young entrepreneurial guide for your child also how you can become a part of the program all the other things they got going on because guess what she found it in st louis but she's taking this thing online so you can be anywhere in the world and be a young biz kid so we'll be right yeah. back. yes sure what's up st louis let me ask you a serious question 
If I saw $20 about to fall out of your pocket, you want me to tell you, right? Well, the fact of the matter is, I see three to $600 per month falling out of your paycheck every month. So guess what? This is me telling you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is H. Cortez, wealth strategist, author, and I'm on a mission to empower our community economically through financial education. See, over the last five years, I've been fortunate enough to be trained and coached by some multimillionaires. And you know what I learned? Is that there's only four things that we have to overcome if we ever plan to build generational wealth. You have to overcome taxes, you have to overcome debt, we have to overcome our credit woes, and we have to overcome our lack of asset accumulation. But if we stop the bleeding by overpaying taxes three to six hundred dollars per month, and that's not me saying that, that comes straight from the IRS. So if you want to know if you're one of the 80 million people that's overpaying taxes, all I want you to do is go over to payraise.com wealthcreationplaybook.com, watch a short video, answer seven questions, and you can find out if you're overpaying taxes, but more importantly, you'll find out what you can do to stop the bleeding. Payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first ever episode of the St. Louis Hustle podcast. I'm Cortez Hustle. She's Michelle A. She's hey. Ariel Pivens Biggs. We're talking teaching entrepreneurship and financial literacy to kids. Ariel is doing a wonderful job with this program. I know you wanted to ask her one more thing before we let her go, Michelle. I just, this has been such uh, an enlightening experience, man. Ariel, you are giving out just this information. Man, I just, again, I just want to go buy me some kids. I want to go borrow some kids. <laughs> I want to go borrow some kids. And it's used to make some money. So if I do such an activity, what are three things, Ariel, once I find me some kids, what are three things I can do today to get them started on the road to entrepreneurship? So the first thing I would tell you to do is to sit oh. down with your kid and come up with an idea and then um, name that idea, like come up with a catchy name for it. And then the second thing I would do is tell you to complete a business plan. And part of that business plan is them doing some research. If you don't do it, let the kid do it. And then the third thing that I would tell you is to open up a savings account because through this whole process, we want to make sure that they understand what to do with money. We want to make sure that as they make the money, they understand that some of this money needs to take care of me in my future. So I need to put some of this away. So those are the tips that I would tell you to do with the child, but also tips for you as a mom or a person that's parenting a child entrepreneur because we got to take care of ourselves too. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is take care of yourself. You can't pour into them if you're empty. The second thing I'll tell you to do is to just make sure that you stay their parent first. Because there's going to be so many people pulling on your child entrepreneur, wanting them there, here, and everywhere. And you want to make sure that you're protecting your child. So you're always a parent first. And then the last thing is finding a tribe of people who um, are doing the same thing that you're doing because then you can have somebody to go and bounce ideas off of when it comes to having a young entrepreneur. A tribe like young biz kids and the young biz kids parents and community. So tell them real quick, Ariel, where do they go to find out more about the program? And I know you guys are giving away a free youth entrepreneurship kit. How do they get that as well? Yes. Yeah, so to find out more about the program, you're best to go to Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Young Biz Kids, and that's Kids with the Z. And then we also have a website, YoungBizKids.org, where you can download your free entrepreneurial kit. And it has things in there like terms that kids should know when you're talking business. And then you also, well, business or entrepreneurship, terms that uh, your kids should know, a business plan. And then also uh, kid-friendly businesses. So if your kid doesn't know where to start, it'll help them figure out other things that they can do. And the last thing I will say about all of this in the journey, it'll help you nail down what your child wants to do because not all kids join entrepreneurship to make money. They might have a community 
something within the community that they would like to see change that won't make them money, but it'll also give them experience in entrepreneurship. It's just not making money, but they're doing something good that feels good on the inside of them. So I believe that kids should do whatever their hearts tell them, whether it makes money or not, in the entrepreneurial phase. So that you can see what's on the inside of them for if they like, would they like marketing? Will they like um, just brainstorming and strategic planning? Will they like organizing? Will they like you find those things out as you let the kids do these different entrepreneurial endeavors? So mm -hmm. I believe whether it makes money or not, if they're saying that they want to do something, allow them that time to do it and make sure they complete it to the end and then do a recap with them and let them know, hey, what did you think about this? What did you like? What did you like? What would you do different next time? And then it'll help you to understand your child more on what their strengths and what their weaknesses are. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Ariel, this is so fun. It's always a pleasure working with you and the young kids. Uh, you are doing an amazing work in the community. Uh, that social entrepreneur game, you got it on lock because you're definitely making an impact. So that's Ariel Bivens Biggs. Uh, you're checking out the first ever episode of St. Louis Hustle. When we come back, we're going to get right into your responses to the question of the day. Be right back. Ask how you can sponsor this show. You know what? Um, it's possible. I think it's, it's, it takes uh, an amazing amount of discipline um, if a person does that. So um, I, the key word is discipline, you know, uh, discipline, because um, you have to really be able to set yourself apart from your old ways. Um, it's almost like, I think, a rehabilitation. If you do that, you have to really, really, really be able to separate yourself from who you used to be, really be able to, I'm going to just go ahead and cut my volume off from a, uh, from a monitor so I'm not distracted because, you know, I get I get distracted by shiny things, my bad. So, um, but you have to really be able to separate yourself from um, who you used to be, the discipline of the old from the new or, you know, the old to the new. Um, if you can't do that, I'll be honest with you. I don't think that transformation it's possible um, because you're always going to confuse the two. Um, and when you do that, I just think it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Um, said it. I'm not saying it ain't possible. Mm -hmm. I just think that you're always going to invite unwelcome circumstances. I think you're always going to take calculated risks that are unnecessary um, or uncalculated risks that are unnecessary. Um, just not necessary. So I say no. Gotcha. 
Well, I'm going uh, to uh, vehemently disagree. Uh, is that a word? Did I use it right? Uh, you know what? Yes. The judge <laughs> say yes, yes sir. Yes. That is, whoop, look at you and, in the song this and, morning. And, and the reason is uh, is because I was that former guy. Um, in, a, in a life, two or three lives ago, um, I was a street corner, uh, street corner pharmacist. Um, I, I was the guy uh, bringing hurt and harm to our communities uh, and standing on the block and blistering cold. And uh, really, um, you know, out of ignorance, because this is what happens when you're a hustler. And see, and I like to distinguish the hustler between the, uh, from the dope dealer. The hustler can sell anything. The dope dealer can only sell drugs. And really, drugs sell themselves. Right. Uh, yep. But when my my crew and I were young, we were, you know, cutting grass, cleaning garages. We were doing what we pumping gas, whatever we could do to make change to go play video games. That's what we were doing. But because we didn't have those legitimate business figures in our community to say, hey, you guys are on to something. You got drive. You got ambition. You're willing to work. So let me help you shape you and mold you into a business owner we didn't have a young biz kid to turn to uh right then but who we did have to turn to was those other uh not so positive entrepreneurs and yeah. they did what we call perverted the hustle and they saw the hustle and the grind in us and they said hey we could use that young crew uh, and they uh, basically encouraged us, groomed us to get on the streets and, and, and do that thing. But now today, uh, I am 20 plus years removed for that, from that and never had a, an inkling to even look back. Um, and, and what I try not to do is judge those people in those circumstances because for me, even though we were on welfare, Michelle, we didn't have lights for weeks at a time. I didn't need to sell no dope. I just did because I was seeking validation from community. I was seeking validation from my peers and all of that Ooh. kind of stuff. And I should have found that had I had the right mentors. And I did have a, a uncle who had a candy truck. If you guys know anything about the cabinet courts, then y'all know Uncle Mac had it popping over there on the candy truck. And I was right there selling y'all the candy through the little window, right? And Doughboy. So, uh, yes, it is possible, but to your point, you do have to completely remove yourself from those situations. You have to find something else to live for. I yeah. found validation in raising my family, and yeah. I didn't have to do it through the street. So, uh, that's how it happened. And I know quite a few who have made that 180 degree turn completely, and they've stayed away. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's one of those things where it, it could be a toss up, man. I remember Monique did her uh, series mm -hmm. on uh, being one decision away from 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 being in jail. It could have been me, or I, I forget the name of it. But any of us could be in a situation where we have to strongly consider stuff like that. That's the same thing go for horn. Same thing go for drug dealing. Yeah. Uh, stripping any anything, you know what I'm saying? Because you know I could have been on that pop. No, <laughs> I'd have been a broke stripper. But but <laughs> off the side, there's no judgment. Whether you selling drugs, hoeing, stripping, whatever your thing is, there is no judgment. Um, it's a free forum to kind of discuss some of those things. Um, which I think in the weeks to come, those will be some interesting topics. Um, yeah. to kind of dive back into. Um, never ever is there judgment because you're right. It could have been me, man. We both have testimonies, uh, Cortez. We both yeah. have stories, yeah. um, as many of you guys do, you know. But never, never any judgment. My homeboy that 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 um, we talked, and he was like, Man, you know, see, I don't mind you telling my story, you know, because I'm real about mine. He was right. a great, a great dude, you know, and he was yeah. real about it for me to come and, and share this, you know, but I, I'm, I'm real about what I do. I went to him first and like, bro, can I share your story? He's like, yes, how yeah. can I do it? You know, uh, he's awesome. a thorough dude. So um, that's what we want to do is we want to bring topics and discuss and, and chop it up with you guys. So there it is. You know? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we are three past the hour. So our first show went uh, haywire at the beginning. We couldn't get audio on some of our stuff. 
Uh, and now we're over on our time, but nevertheless, uh, you have been checking out St. Louis Hustle podcast, the live version. I'm your boy, Cortez Hustle. She's your girl, Michelle A. And until we talk to y'all next time, man, we want you to get your hustle up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every single one of you. Now hustle up.